Now, sticking with company news, Zida has delivered double-digit top-line growth with revenue rising 19%. This, however, didn't trickle down to the bottom line with headline earnings per share falling 12.5% due to the impact of high interest rates and fuel costs on the used car market. And joining me now to unpack the company's performance in greater detail is CEO Ramasela Ganda. Thank you so much for your time, Ramasela. Now, let's actually start off with that top line that saw double-digit growth. Just frame for us the factors that are keeping it so buoyant. You know, key to our growth, I mean, when you look at the leasing business, is a strategy that we've put together to say that we're going to look at growing our commercial, heavy commercial leasing, and that has really paid off nicely uh, with the growth. And corporate leasing, I think we see corporate SA that has really shifted to the way they look at leasing. And because Zeta doesn't just provide leasing, it provides a full management services. And, and we have seen a change in the market of understanding what this has been, and that has been a growth that came through international travelers and local travelers, grateful for what we've seen in the December period of people traveling. And you know, car sale as well, as much as the, the margins are under pressure, but we have really seen good growth in volumes that have come out of our car sale. So all in all, all our three segments have done exceptionally well when it looks at growth. So Zira is a, yeah. is a company that is mostly poised for growth. Well, actually take a look at you know that growth that didn't quite filter down uh, to the bottom line and you cited uh, the used car market as one of the headwinds and quite interesting since we actually did see a growth in uh, sales volumes there what's driving that pressure and do you expect it to be sticky look you know we're coming out of the period of super profit i mean there's no other way of explaining it when yeah. we didn't have cars you know, anybody uh, used car was like a, a gem for everybody. And we are now stabilizing, we're getting into normality. But I think key to note is that we do not expect to go back to the pre-COVID level when we look at the used cars. And it's because of the efficiencies that we've extracted and restructuring we've done around our used car business. You know, we've streamlined that business and we expect that the margin will still be under pressure you know, another 2% down on, on, on them, but really nothing more than that. So we're very optimistic that we, we're reaching the end of that low cycle and, and that will come back. And we see volumes, I mean, we've changed our strategy and tech with regard to, to our car sales. We are now more selling on retail. We've got 14 dealerships throughout the country. And, and that's been a very good pipeline and, group and good margin. But over and above that, I mean, we're introducing what we call a used car digital dealership. That will be the first in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and we believe that that will provide another platform with less incremental cost, but really giving us just the top line growth. So that should actually work for our margin going forward. Is the competitive landscape uh, a concern uh, on some level in terms of the used car market? Look, what differentiates Zida is that we sell the vehicles that are being rented out and leased out in the Avis and the budget brand. So we, we are in control of our vehicle. We know the vehicle. We know the maintenance of the vehicle. We know the cost. We know where it has been. I mean, most people will say, what do you know about the rental car? But I can tell you today, that's the one car that you can put your stamp on it that it has been maintained, especially the Avis car, because we look after it. You can drive it the way you want to drive it, but when it comes back, we do a full inspection on it. So when you buy it, you buy a different car. So we don't have really a competitor in that regard. And most companies will be buying cars that you know come from just a man that you don't know the history some people can but with us you've got full history of the vehicle and, and you've got the Avis brand. And what does that count for? It means you can bring it back and we will be able to refund you. So we, we put our stamp behind the car. So really on that space, we are not competing. Hmm. Uh, a really uh, interesting and a good point that you make there, really also just speaking to the uh, integration in uh, the business. Uh, let's go into uh, Africa. Uh, you've uh, also posted positive uh, results there on your growth in a greater Africa. How much runway do you have in that penetration? And are there any market or currency risks that you are worried about? Look, if I look at countries like Zambia, I don't even think we have started scratching the surface. Mm. Um, and, and, and that for me, looking at the potential in the greater Africa region, I think we still have a long way to go. I think the growth looking really good. 
obviously our strategy was to move with companies that are mostly in south africa so we follow that very strongly and when we do and it, it just provide a cushion for the risk and in most cases we also provide financing to a south africa based that is based in a in the greater africa country look funding and and, and and forex is always an issue um and we look at it i mean we're operating in ghana and we've experienced high inflation in the last year and that still remain an issue but you know as an, a company that operate in sub-saharan we're an emerging company uh operating and and we mean we operate in those countries so the risk of forex you know are part and parcel of our business and for us always is to how to mitigate it with a forex strategy mm -hmm. and as well i mean we do natural hedges with our customers in some countries we do dollar-based business so really we look at all the alternative that we can work for us and and so far it is paying very well and we believe that there are greater other african countries that we have not started tapping in an opportunity for us and the avis brand is quite big for us to penetrate Ah, all right. Well, Ramasella, let's wrap up the conversation by looking into your balance sheet. I understand that debt is at five billion. How much room do you have in your reduction efforts there? Look, I don't think we are on the reduction level. I think let me make it very okay. clear. We are on the right. growth path. Okay. And our growth path, especially on the leasing, I mean, we're sitting with a headroom of about 2.7 billion on our facility uh, still to go. So I really do not want to leave the market to that, mm. you know, our debt makes us not to sleep. We have looked at the short-term rental business and we look at what will be most appropriate. But when you look at the leasing business, leasing generate great return. And really, what is our business? Our business is to raise funding, to deploy it, and make better money out of that funding. Mm -hmm. So really, we're not raising debt to buy capital infrastructure. We're raising debt to make money out of it. And I mean, we've generated 59% EBITDA margin out of that business and, you know, we're sitting comfortably and we believe, yes, the interest rate cycle, like all the other cycle, will come down. And when it does, it even becomes better. So the business model for Zeta is continuously being you know, prudent in how we deploy the funding, where we get the funding. But really, it's not our intention to say we need to uh, slow down on debt because that's not our business model. Ah, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time and just giving us a greater insight into the numbers that we saw coming out of Zida and also the prospects going forward. Appreciate the time, Ramasela. That was Zida CEO, Ramasela Ganda.